So I'm listening to some uh, Norwegian, or no, I don't know if it's, yeah, maybe Netherlands uh, Marine, uh, Marathon Marine. And I just thought I'd listen to it. It had one person listening, so I thought, why not check it out? I, I do like to listen to around the world what's going on. And, man, this guy ripped off a bunch of shit all at once when I first tuned in. And then he was done, and I was like, that was, that was kind of cool because I was trying to figure out, well, I don't speak that language, but I almost can, you know, um, translate it being an intuitional psychic. And it is a some slight interest there. Um, whenever I have heard people in the past, I was able to – um, copy their uh, slang so much that I could go on the radio and they would think I was from fucking Bulgaria um, just because they were speaking, you know, English, but with a heavy Bulgarian accent. I don't, I probably can't do it anymore because I don't remember some of the things I used to techniques and stuff. That was a years ago and I don't practice shit like that, but I did get good at it. Uh, and I was inspired because the guy brought home a fish from um, Lake Mead that was like that big. Uh, and so it was in a, <laughs> God, it was a huge fish. I couldn't believe it. I like me too. So what am I going to talk about? I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to smoke a little weed. I thought I'd come on the air a little bit tonight. Look a little more like my favorite author's character uh, in the book, The Earth of the New Sun, uh, where they have uh, Severian playing the main character. Severian was uh, more or less a, uh, you know, um, brought up in the Tortures Guild, and from birth, he was in lucky enough, he considered to be very lucky in that time, because it was like a million years in the future on Earth, and there were so many societies had come up and come down that uh, some were technological and then ended up leaving and came back and laughed again, and then it just become, if you will, will become this distinct sociological environment where it's almost like the civil war again even though many technological societies came and went aliens had intervened and they even had a building that was in the shape of an aqueduct but it was a building you know like a roman aqueduct but it was a building that went all the way around the town and if you came and went from that city you had to be identified by these otherworldly extraterrestrials they would look out windows and shit at you and go oh look at that human wants to come through that's a pretty cool looking human there or or that's an ugly one there you know it was it was really cool uh but he didn't say all that in the book but you got kind of felt into it you know because when he was describing going through there there would be beings of totally that you won't see walking around in there deliberating on you know whatever circumstance and business they may have there <laughs> So it was kind of cool, but um, they would only let you out one area. So it was like very traffic. It was like traffic backed up forever with horses and carriages and shit. Now, these individuals at this time in, the, in this supposed science fiction fantasy world were in the Civil War like error, even though it wasn't the Civil War. It was just society had drifted back into that uh, technology was lost and stuff. And I guess there were certain rules, but they did have and managed to hold on to some lasers, some, um, you know, even some big, bigger lasers and a jet. And they were able to mow down a lot of the soldiers that were fighting them with the few that they were able to keep in their hands without them breaking down. And, and in one case or two cases, uh, right when the battles were taking place while Severian was out and about, uh, he had had to be recruited. He was recruited at one time after he left the Torturers Guild, and then he was recruited into that army for a time because if he didn't, he would have gotten shot anyway. So um, at that point, uh, you know, they, he makes friends with somebody who gets him on board a real jet, and the jet, you know, um, you can tell, uh, you know, it, you know, it's totally foreign to him. He's like, wow, I'm flying above, blah blah. And then the jet fucking crashes because it has some, some kind of um, mechanical problem. They survived, but it was just a part of the book that makes it even better. And uh, uh, let's see. There are a few characters. I'm not going to start mentioning characters. This is, an, this is not an official, the Earth of the New Sun, uh, what do you call it, uh, review. This is just an opinion, you know, and I thought the book was fantastic, by the way. Gene Wolfe wrote it with an E on the end of Wolfe. Gene Wolfe. And... 
I tried to read one of his other books, but I was just too struck by the original um, Quilogy, I believe it is. Like it's five – I forget what a Quilogy is. That five books in one or something? It was something like that. Uh, Quintet or Quintrilogy. I don't know what they fucking call it, okay? Uh, but I can tell you this. It was fucking that thick. The fucking book was like that thick, okay? It took me for fucking ever to read it. But, hey – I don't read super fast. I even double read paragraphs so I can remember the story I'm reading. And, um, you know, in many cases he would, after he got out of the army, well, he had some early friends that he had met, but he re-meted them. And one of them was, they were, it was part of an excavation crew that uh, basically, you know, cleared, it was an excavation company that cleared shit. Now, in the descriptions, Severian even said in his narrate while he was uh, talking in the book to himself, because you can hear his thoughts. Uh, he he kind of all his thoughts you're kind of like able to tune into while he's going about his way. And in the particular time, he explains even the dust about in this location is full of glass because so many societies had come and gone there and so many glass blowers and different kinds of glass particles and everything glass, maybe even nuclear glass, ended up fucking falling back onto the ground from all those different societies or, you know, just settling there. And so even the dirt was sparkling with glass dust. So when you hear stuff like that on a, in a book, those kinds of details, it just makes you wonder, God, that almost sounds like it's based in reality. Um, just like, you know, like somebody is reading the future and that's why I'm a warlock because sometimes you read a book and you can tell, Hey, this, this guy is a possible warlock. Now he might be a covert warlock, but he's, I think he may be a warlock. Cause when I read the book, I was like, uh, the way he was deliberating the story to you, it was from Severian's head. And it was, it was a, it was a weird feeling. You know, like a lot of books will have you think, you know, the, the, the character, you'll be able to hear his thoughts. Right. So um, in this one, though, it's 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 an ayahuasca trip. If I was to ever go on one, which I haven't, but I've heard about them and it feels like it's an ayahuasca trip. It's enlightening. Another time he's touches dead bones underneath the water. And because of the claw, the elixir or, or, or no claw of. I forget that it's a, he's searching for a claw. Okay. I know. And he finds it. I think he's searching for it. And then he finds or He's given it. And then he has it on him like a pendant. And he goes to touch some bones under some water because he didn't have anywhere to, to put his hand. He was trying to do something with a boat or something. He ends up touching some bones under the water. And all of a sudden he feels something, grab his arm. He pulls it up. It's a woman. It's not any bones anymore. It's gone from bones to woman. And she, he has to, he's all of a sudden he's friends with her and then they become fuck partners. And in the meantime, he's still dealing with these excavators. And one excavator is a mad scientist who fucking does something to his, one of his workers. And the guy just starts continuing to grow and grow and grow into this massive human monster. And it, it, through the book, you run into him and later they became enemies Severian could not, uh, they weren't friends anymore. So he went by there and almost got killed a few times from the monster and the mad scientist. Anyway, the movie is really good. And I would suggest, uh, I mean, the movie is really good. Did I just say that? I meant the, the story is really good. Especially if you read it in the format of the five books it comes in, I think. Uh, then you don't miss a beat with it. You don't have to go find the other book and all that stupid shit. And if you read the book like that, with all the books in there, then you're not going to have that issue. And it's a, it's a good suggestion. You know, read. Don't even read little uh, little pieces of books and say, "Well, I don't have the time to read an entire fucking book like that." Why are you giving me a hard time? No, just don't read the book then. Okay, don't read a book if you're going to go in little pieces. No, read the entire quilogy. I think it's called a quilogy. And don't fuck around. And yeah, it's fucking great. I loved it. I loved the book. Okay. Now I could go into more detail. And there's now I've read the book a long time ago, but he goes into different areas where there's like a manipulated dimension, so to speak, so that like once you get in there, you can't figure out how the physics are in there. You're not exactly sure what's going on. It almost seems like a magic is um, controlling the environment. And then he goes through some rooms and discovers other things. Then he gets caught in some caves and some beings that are like kind of like 
uh, you know, uh, ape men, uh, Bigfoot though. They're like Bigfoots. They're all all in this cave. And then the horses there were like super massive. They were slightly altered looking horses, you know, uh, not the kind we have. And they were fucking heavy duty. And they were monsters in themselves, but the the descriptions in the book, just the way things went, I would say uh, five stars for that book. The book, uh, yeah, it's called uh, The Earth of the New Sun. It's supposed to take a million years in the future. That's where it's supposed to take place. And there's all kinds of identifying characteristics in the book that can't really be described the way it came off when I read the book. So I, that's why I'm not calling this an official review because that book – God damn, man, I got some fuck, fucking dirty hair. That book was so good, though, that, you know, it's almost like, you know, I hate, I, I don't like orgasms to think about orgasms, but if it, if there was an orgasm after you read a book, it would be about the quality of the book. Was the book so good that you're never going to forget it? Yeah.